mysterious fires and explosions in Russia continue. Now, a fire has engulfed a Russian army facility in the east of Moscow. The blaze burned for more than four hours inside garage units, emergency services told the Moskva City News Agency. Dramatic footage shared on the Redovka forum showed smoke billowing from the building. Russia's defense ministry has not commented on the incident. The blaze comes after the Izvizda engineering plant in St. Petersburg, which produces high-speed diesel engines for the Russian military, caught fire. And while there is more and more talk about a new Russian attack through Belarus, Ukrainian officials say that it will most likely not happen. There is little imminent danger of a Russian invasion of Ukraine from Belarus, the director of Ukraine's military intelligence agency said on Friday, dismissing recent Russian maneuvers as either routine military activity or feints intended to confuse. These are all elements of disinformation campaigns, he said, aimed at convincing Ukraine to divert soldiers from the combat zone in the southeast. In a wide-ranging interview on the state of the war in Ukraine, the military intelligence chief, Kirill Obudinov, also spoke about Russian efforts to encourage Iran to continue to supply its forces with drones and missiles, as well as Moscow's apparently senseless obsession with conquering the city of Bakhmut, which has little strategic value. For weeks, Russia has bolstered its military bases in Belarus with conscripts and moved troops by rail to and fro, raising concerns that it might be planning a second invasion of Ukraine from the north. While the threat of a renewed Russian invasion from Ukraine's northern border with Belarus is not imminent, Mr. Budinov said, it still cannot be ruled out. It would be wrong to discount this possibility, he added, but also wrong to say we have any data confirming it exists. None of the Russian troops are arrayed in assault formations, he said. Training camps for Russian soldiers are filled with newly mobilized civilians who, after completing training, are sent to fight in the Donbas region in eastern Ukraine. The training sites lack sufficient armored vehicles in mechanically working order to stage an attack, he said. Russia's military has tried to raise alarms in the Ukrainian army by loading soldiers on trains that chug toward Belarus's border with Ukraine, he said. The Soviet Union employed similar tactics during World War II, he said, sending soldiers on useless train rides to imitate attacks or retreats. In Belarus, one train loaded with Russian soldiers stopped recently for half a day near Ukraine's border, then returned with all the soldiers aboard. Mr. Budinov said, calling it a carousel. In the southeast in the Donbas region, Mr. Budinov said, the political ambitions of the leader of a Russian mercenary army called the Wagner Group have partly dictated strategy on the Russian side. The group's founder, Yevgeny Prigoshin, a Kremlin insider, has made a crusade of capturing the city of Bakhmut to upstage rival commanders in the Russian regular army, Mr. Budinov said. Wagner coordinates with the army but is the primary force in the Bakhmut front. A Russian general appointed in September as commander of Russian forces in Ukraine, Sergei Shurovikin, has aligned with Mr. Prigoshin in a rivalry with the Russian Minister of Defense, Sergei K. Shuigu, Mr. Budinov said. There is only an ideological and media question here, he said of the fierce assault on Bakhmut. That is a reason Wagner units are trying so fanatically to capture this town. They need to show they are a force, and they can do what the Russian army could not. We see that clearly and understand. While capturing Bakhmut is not considered strategically important, it would improve Russia's position in the east by opening roads to other Donbas cities still under Ukrainian control, he said. Wagner operates units of prisoners who are promised amnesty in exchange for a tour of duty on the front line, videos of the recruitment efforts in prisons show. These infantry units have been sent forward in costly human wave attacks at Ukrainian lines, Mr. Budinov said. The alliance of Mr. Prigoshin and General Shurovikin has led to the transfer of heavy weaponry from the army to the units of Wagner, expanding the organization's role in the war, Mr. Budinov said. Wagner mercenaries had earlier fought in Syria and Africa. The group calls itself a private military company. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.